Yeah. Well, we'll go yeah. ahead and, um, and get started. Okay. Open with a quick prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for today that we can come and fellowship and study um, and dig deeper into your word. Um, please guide us in all truth. Um, help us ask good questions and help us give good answers uh, and keep our, keep our feet on the right path. Uh, to help make us uh, better disciples uh, for you in this troubled world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to do lesson four. So, um, you know, we did the first part of the, this thing, which says this complete last week's lesson. We did that last week. So we, we're fresh start on um, the first 10 verses of chapter two. Just a a little background, a little, you know, I want to make sure we keep our eyes on the big picture of, of Ephesians because, you know, jumping in is, is um, kind of uh, verse by verse as we're going, we can lose sight of the forest and, and keep smashing into the trees. Um, so, you know, the, the Paul wrote Ephesians to the churches around Ephesus that we'll, you can read about that in Acts 19. To display the scope of God's eternal plan for all humanity, Jews and Gentiles alike, and how we're brought together under that umbrella of the church and really digs into that chapter one was really digging into um, to who God is and what God has done for us through Christ. So that's um, and then, you know, chapter two starts off talking about us, talking about humanity um, and us as individuals and um, kind of digs into that. So there's a lot of interesting um, topics to, to talk about in these first 10 verses. Um, again, like in chapter one, we saw the Trinitarian language just leaped off the page at us, and that'll continue to, to leap off the page at us for the rest of the, um, the rest of the epistle. But if somebody would read uh, Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 10 for us, and then we'll kind of get started. I'll do it. Okay. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and the kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. Thanks, Clara. Interesting. Um, I, I listened to, at lunchtime today, I listened to an interview with Alice Cooper. And, um, you know, everybody, if you don't know who Alice Cooper is, um, rock star from um, the 70s, yep. bad, um, bad boy rock star. His uh his his father was a minister and his grandfather was a minister. So he he calls himself now the the tip the the prodigal son. He is he's, he's a professor now. Um, his his interview, I mean, the, his discussion really did talk about, um, you know, God calling him back, um, you know, kind of rescuing him from where he was, um. And, and and so a lot of this language, you know, we're in we're in um, in the interview. He talked, you know, Alice talked about, um, you know, being 
The Walking Dead, um, and 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 that it was God that 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 brought him back, and that without God doing the work, be you know that work of grace on him, um, you know left to his own devices, he would have continued to spin out of control. Um, but it's an it, it's on um, YouTube. If you type in you know, Alice Cooper interview. Um, it, it'll pop up. It's like 11 minutes long. It's pretty good. Um, he was also good friends with Glenn Campbell. They both lived in Arizona and, um, and Glenn Campbell, um, you know, uh, turned to Christ as well later in his life. So got off drugs, same as Alice Cooper did. Um, so some interesting stories there, but, but just kind of glancing before we dive in, you know, that, you know, just looking at some of these verses, you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once worked. And not only were we just dead in our sins, Paul's and the Holy Spirit makes it clear who, who our leader was. You know, we, before we were Christians, before we knew Christ, we followed the devil. The devil was our master. Um, you know, whether we acknowledged it or not. Um, and, you know, for all about, um, you know, kind of living out our passions within you know, that, uh, whatever we decided to do, you know, we would, we would do, um, and that we were by nature, children of wrath, like everybody else, like the rest of mankind. So, until God reaches down and changes and changes our nature, that we're we're children of wrath. I mean, we are we're 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 doomed. Um, Man is doomed without God doing, yeah. um, you know, doing this for us. Um, Excuse me, sorry, we're late. Oh, that's okay, Deb. Um, our kids called us from Baltimore. So I apologize. That's all right. If your if your video just starts messing up, you can always cut the audio, cut, cut the video off. Um if okay. it's, it started up and now it looks like it's okay. That's um you know, so God's merciful turning of believers, um depravity into salvation through Christ, Christ you know, you know, glorifies the workmanship of God. And, it, and the verses end up, um, and, and as Alice Cooper talked about it in the interview, where, um, you know, he's a work in progress, just like the rest of us. Um, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, um, which God prepared beforehand, a long time ago, for us to, for us to accomplish. Um, anyway, just re really reinforces again what what was said in in chapter one, and we can build off of that. But some of these themes are um, the first one is really a unfortunately it's kind of controversial. Um, total depravity, um, you know, is the in you know by that we mean um, the theologians mean that. Without God changing us, we can't stop being children of wrath. It doesn't mean that everybody's as bad as they can possibly be. That's not what total depravity means. Total depravity means we are dead in our sins and that of our own power, we can't do anything until God reaches down and does something first to us. That, that's what that means. So it doesn't, it does not in any way mean that we're all that you know, before Christ, before we knew Christ, we were, we were as bad as we can be, because I think we all know that we could have been much worse even. Um, but that, that's one of the key things. And, the, you know, I look at, you know, people waffle on that and go, well, you know, we're, you know, we're born a bl blank slate. Um, you know, the, um, and, and then our, um, our events in our lives and that kind of stuff kind of make us who we are. Well, there, there's a little truth to that, that, you know, we're shaped by our experiences. 
Um, but what we're not is we're not a blank slate. We're born children of wrath. We're not developed into children of wrath. We're born that way. Um, and until, unless God fixes us, we're going to continue to stay that way. Um, Jeff? Yes. Anyone who's worked with small children knows that human beings are not naturally good. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody's an expert on that one, it's you. <laughs> I will definitely take you I'll, I'll take your word for that one too. Um, so it, it but it, um, I don't know that, but there's a lot, you know, I, I don't necessarily know why um, this particular theological concept causes people a lot of angst. And I, I, I think it comes back to, to, um, you know, to God's choosing it. God, God choosing some versus others um, and, and people trying to protect um, the justice of God for him, defend him in that way um, and, and putting more burden on our choice, more burden, more emphasis on our choice instead of um, God's choice being first. And then we follow and suit after he's empowered us. Um, do y'all have any kind of comments on that? Um, have y'all, I mean, ever gotten in any discussions with anybody about, um, you know, depravity, our, our, you know, the, our kind of human condition? No, the only time I've gotten in conversations is where they, people have said about how different the Old Testament and the New Testament are and how i guess what they said is you know god was really mean in the old testament you know so you know i tell them well then you just have to keep reading to you know to get to the end of the story <laughs> also I have to interpret that a little better too yeah okay well but just just know that um you know we're being in the Anglican Church, um, it's a, you know, it's a classic reform, you know, reformed Protestant church, and and one of the key tenets of classic Reformation theology is total depravity. Um, so, you know, we're the and just like we're told so many times, we're before we're saved, we're enemies of God, and. You know, if we're the one making all the choices, why can't we boast? You know, what, what's what's to stop us? What reason would there be for us not to to go? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I chose. I, you know, it was my choice. Um, and trying, you know, but, but we're told at the end of these verses that um, um, This is not of your own. You're saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. I don't know how you can be more direct than that uh, about that this particular issue. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. The, the only thing that I would say, Jeff, is um, in order to have God be able to change in you, you have to be willing to want that change. And I, when I talk to people about how I became to, became with Christ and what at what point in my life that that had brought me to the Lord you know they said well you know I I'm sorry that that happened to you but you know I have a pretty good life I really don't have anything to worry about it's like those people don't have it almost um like how do you get people that really I mean everybody had knows how, how do I say it it's like this person who I was I'm talking about has a lot of money. And so all her needs are always taken care of. And whenever she needs something, she just gets it. Um, I think she misses out on a lot because she's not, you know, she doesn't have any humility and she's kind of, um, she can be harsh at times, but she's a pretty good, she's a pretty decent person. Like she'll say, I don't do anything wrong, but I don't believe that Jesus Christ saved our sins. You know, like, what do you say to somebody like that? Like when I, from when I hear other people's stories, they've actually hit and rock bottom or something traumatic happened in their lives or they've been searching and finding the Holy Spirit went through them. You know, they, they, they just can't understand that, you know, 
they like how do you what do you say to somebody who's all their needs are always been taken care of and they never have to want or worry about anything now that that uh, Lori, that's a that's a that's a tricky question that that's why that's uh, from my my opinion one of the reasons that jesus talked about how difficult it is for a rich person to enter heaven yeah they don't perceive any needs yeah they who are they trusting in they end up trusting in their wealth and their yeah. and, the, and basically back to the story of the, you know you're trusting in the walls that you built up around yourself yeah and, and it really is a blessing for <laughs> us to hit the wall and we're not just hitting the wall because that just happened to us yeah we're hitting the wall and getting to that cr that crisis point in our life um because god's put us there yeah our attention um and then, i believe that i believe god puts us and has traumatic some things in your life to go through some tribulation and some challenges to get you where he wants you to be i do believe that and people put and god puts people in your life as well good and bad to yeah. actually get you where he wants you to be i i do believe that it happened to me and and bad things are, are put there uh as well to achieve god's good purpose yeah i mean but back to your back to your question of what do you say to a person like that? Yeah, you need to preach the gospel to them because money or not, um, she's got a huge hole inside yes. of her. Yes, mm -hmm. eventually she, you know, that's what God God brings that realization to us that I'm I'm missing something, and 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 you know that when when people start asking those questions, God's working on them. He's, yeah, true. Um, yeah. and you know, but, but, you know, God's the one who brings the challenges in our lives that brings us to our daggum knees. Think of Paul on the road to Damascus. Yeah. Driven and mission focused on what he was, what he was out to do, which is to imprison Christians who were destroying the historic religion that he grew up in. He was, yeah. he owed he wanted to he 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 wanted to snuff these people out and what was his was it he didn't volunteer to be struck blind on the road to damascus god did this yeah get his attention got his attention did get his attention and changed it yeah, um, yeah. so uh, but back to you know your your friend will eventually hit the wall and so you just <laughs> preaching the gospel and, um, well, I think you're right because what she says now, she just feels empty inside because everything is boring to her. It's like something is missing, kind of like what you just said. So maybe she should just read the Bible. And maybe the Holy Spirit will reveal something in those scriptures. You know, maybe not the first time, but you know, those times when she's bored and you know, and 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 she has nothing better to do and she's not flying somewhere. Maybe that's what she should be doing when she has a moment. And that's what I told her. But I told her to start with the New Testament because the Old Testament is a little tough. <laughs> and the God's a little mean back then. <laughs> yeah. Something catastrophic has to happen to, yes. to get people to help other people. Yeah. Um, Lori. Yes. Help other people. Is she a giving person? Um, She's a giving person. How can I say? Because she can. So, um, to the point where if she, she had bought me a present and she lost it. And I asked her never to buy me presents. I'd rather just be in your company. And it was expensive. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just buy you another one. So there's no meaning to anything. If you have no meaning or worth anything, there's no value. And how can, how can you, how can you know value or, or even of somebody else's life when you have everything that's handed to you? I think that's a detriment to be honest with you. I think really, um. You know, I always kid around if I hit the lotto, you know, I, if I ever played it, that would be better. But if I ever hit the lotto, I said, I'd have to give most of my money away because I would keep me grounded. Yep. You know I, what I mean? And I promise, I've promised God the same thing. If he would let me win this billion yeah. dollars, I'd only keep 10%. Yeah. <laughs> and he hasn't come through on that for me yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we really are talking about uh, amazing grace uh, yeah. and, and love and mercy and kindness. Um, and 
and how what and what God does for us. Um, you, you know, we really can't appreciate. You can't appreciate being saved if you don't think you're lost. That's a good. Cool, I'm gonna write that down. So, oh, it's again, Lori. That ain't original. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought. Well, I'm putting your name next to it because I didn't hear it. Um, but you know, we've, to, until we understand the depth of of, of our need, and, you know, the depth of our 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 sin and the potential for that. Um, you know, it, it's it's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a, that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit does. It brings out mm -hmm. even to where even Paul can say, "I'm the chief of sinners." Um, when Paul has been walking the straight and narrow path, and he still calls himself the chief. Of sinners. Mm. Um, you know, so it's God's grace, and grace is mentioned three times in these ten verses, and six times in the. So it really grace is really. Mm -hmm. These well. Jeff, uh, Paul thought he was doing, he was thought he was doing a work for his God. Yeah. Doing all this and stuff. He thought he was doing right. Yeah, he, <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah. That that Paul Paul was zealous for God, but just wrong. You know that <laughs> it's it's kind of it's it's like um it's like it's like Islam. They're very zealous for God, which has a, a which can be very positive. But they're dead wrong in the in their belief system, so it's so it's easy to be zealous for God and be wrong, and that's it, that's a, a, a but that's a yeah you know, that's that broken our broken human nature, you know. We're, um, uh, uh, until until God can give us eyes to see and ears to hear, you know, we we just we, we can't. We can't really grasp the truth. Okay. Well, just we'll skip through the. There's really no need to skip for us to walk walk through the outline. Um, but th that sinfulness of man that I, I really really want us to to emphasize that 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 um. That mankind without Christ is they're not it's not a good people. It's human nature's broken. Um and God has to God has to fix that. I know I say this over and over again, so I apologize for the you know belaboring um the point, but we we you know if we you know recognizing that we're spiritually dead before God and that we're unable to approach him, that we have no desire to approach him. And that we actively hide from him um, during our life before we're Christians um, is exactly what we see in Genesis 3 8. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves long. Oh. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So, I mean, we did you know, before we were Christians. We did the same thing. We fool ourselves. We hide from God. We, um, you know, we pick and choose what we'll believe. Um, we make our own little. We make our own mold. Our own little God in our minds of, of um, and we tell ourselves that we're not that bad. You know, look at you know Joe over there. He's a terrible guy, but Bob. Bob's a really good guy. Um, and so we do this contrasting ourselves with um, um, with others, and it makes us makes us feel better. And I, I use the words, and I re remember using them. Somebody asked me if I was saved, and I said, "Saved from what?" <laughs> I didn't even know. I mean, just you, it's kind of the thing you don't know that what you don't know, um, and that was just an example. Um, 
at in Romans. And since, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we, we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin was not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam who was a type of the one who was to come. So you know, from the, from the beginning, um, you know, once, once Adam um, and Eve fell, um, all humanity was broken. Create whole, all creation was broken. Um, the implication is that, you know, we, we always talk about sin leads to death. It's not only, you know, it's sin and death, physical death, are tied together, but sin and spiritual death are are, are tied together. So there's multi levels in that. In that, um, and so death entered mankind at the disobedience of Adam. Um, and by nature, we stand in jeopardy of God's eternal wrath. Um, and that being able to recognize our sin is a, is a true blessing. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like the the the, the, the hymn "Amazing Grace," how the that the, you know it was written by a slave trader. Um, you know, looking back on his life and seeing everything he had done, um, and realizing just how wicked he was, um, and and all of that. You know, God being able to give him eyes to see that. Um, I think. Part of the problem nowadays is that so many people don't believe in God's wrath. They don't believe in a hell, that there are consequences. There's yeah, just this kind of new age, vague kind of spiritualism, nebulous sort of thing that you, you all become one mixed together in the cosmic universe and they don't seem to believe in a personal God and that he has requirements. That's true, Laura. I mean, that's, um, you yeah, know, that's the, the state of mankind. We, we pick and choose what we'll believe. And um, some people go the universal cosmic power route. Other people go to the classic, just rationalism and materialism route, believe in nothing other that they can, touch and feel um and, and and you can argue with them until they're you're they're you're blue in the face it won't make any difference until god changes their heart but that's that god changes their heart through the presentation of the gospel and that's what we you know even if it's slamming into the same wall over and over again that's what we need to do um, continue to share the gospel message because that's the mechanism that God works um, to, to bring people to him. Well, well, Jeff, you're absolutely right. And I will say this, that I don't know if anybody saw the Emmys. Well, I don't watch the Emmys, but I saw the news on the Emmys and a, a, a couple of singers, they did a satanic dance. And I saw part of it where they were worshiping the devil and everybody got up and gave him a standing ovation. You know what I mean? And the song was unholy. And it's like how we are really living in a fallen world and it's really going to be hard with these people a lot of people don't believe of the wrath of god or the fear of god or consequences or what laura said a personal relationship with god they don't have any of that how do you save anybody like that where so many young people are clapping and thinking this is all great i couldn't believe it it was demonic and i didn't even watch it i saw it on the news this morning and they had clips of it and it, it almost is this is the masks are coming are coming down. People are showing what they're um what they really believe. Now, but Lori, also on that, if um the pushback from their perspective on what you just said 
is what this was just a work of art. This was a, a, a show. The song itself was about man fidelity to his wife and being seduced by that um, by that other woman. And that's what that whole thing was about. That's what they'll say. That's what they say. But I looked wow. at not exactly what you said. So when, yeah. when you fire, you get burnt. Yeah. Eventually. Yep. Yeah. Fire get burnt. You're exactly right. The, um, but yeah, this dead in our sins thing that that God, you know, kind of cures us from um did remind me of the the one of my favorite movies is The Princess Bride. And um mm -hmm. If you can remember Miracle Max, he was talking about, no, he's not dead. He's only mostly dead. <laughs> and uh, we're totally dead without Christ. There's mm -hmm. no mostly dead. We're, we're all dead. It's when, when, when I see the, the dead in our sins aspect, I think the cockroach in the corner that's upside down, feet curled up. <laughs> mm -hmm. no way that cockroach is ever going to walk again. <laughs> yeah. Mess up the house. That cockroach is dead. And there's nothing that's going to stop that cockroach from being dead. Yeah. That's what we're like until God changes us. Yeah. But Christianity in America is on the downfall. And many other countries are more Christ like than us now. It's, it's, I think we'll have um, our African brothers and sisters evangelizing us. Um, Amen. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So we talked a little bit about grace. Um, so I'm, I'm on page four now, just by the way. So um, you know the the three three big enemies that that um, that we uh, are confronted with. Mm -hmm. You know the 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 fall torched us and us being humanity. The world, the flesh, and the devil. All three of these, and this was in the first 10 verses here. Um, all three of these work together to keep mankind in happy disobedience. I thought that was a good phrase. Happy yep. disobedience to the creator. Um, and also, we got to remember that God's restraining hand is thankfully on us before we're Christians and other people. Because if his restraining hand wasn't keeping things in check, I I, I can't even comprehend how evil and wicked um, the world would be. Even worse. So God still is it still keeps on, you know, his restraining hand on things. Um, yeah, but I think he's losing his grip a little bit there, Jeff, because it's getting worse and worse. We might. We we might be seeing when Jesus come back in our times. It's that bad, I think, out there. It's possible. Uh, we, I was talking about this with somebody uh, yesterday, and and um, you know how both of us were reluctant to to always call that. Well, we're you know we expect the you know Jesus to come back next week. Um, but <laughs> yeah, we're thinking that for the last you know thirty years or so, but um, but. Now it seems like all sorts of mechanisms are in place for um, to carry out the balance of revelation that we're yep. um, I, COVID and the, the pandemic really did I, I just amaze me at how the populace will bend the knee to authority and um, and submit. Mm hmm to tracking devices, submit to all sorts of stuff. I mean, we had the technology to really pull off, um, you know, what, what we read in the latter part of Revelation. So I, yeah. I'm just, a, I don't know if it'll be 10 years from now, 15 years from now, but I just don't see without God, some God bringing a revival in yeah. we, for a hundred years. I, well, you see also when it talks about in in the revelation about the ten kings and um you know and if you look at it at the European Union mm. you know how that's you now they've they've come together in a group you know and they would all be separate kings so you know is that possibly it's possible sure and uh, 
but you know it's it's um all the rule you know the in revelation it talks about the rulers all having like minds yeah they're all intent on their goal and their goal i mean the stated goal of world economic forum mm -hmm. eu leadership which is part of that um our leadership is to create a better world um you know so you know satan wants to destroy mankind and take as many people with him as he can he knows his time's short um but you know but the 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 misled people uh, i th they actually think they're doing they think they're doing good stuff it's really weird they think they're building a better world <laughs> well let me ask you something jeff i'm so sorry let me just ask you this what you know Satan, Satan must know that Jesus is coming, like we know Jesus is coming. He he knows. Don't you believe that he knows everything? Mm. And don't don't you think he knows that by destroying his world and making everything evil, it's gonna Jesus will eventually come, and he, and he will be you know the non-believers and the believers will be you know sent where they're going to be sent to in the lake of fire. The non-believers along along with Satan, that would be the end of his demise. <laughs> So is he trying to take as many people as he can with him? Is that why he's destroying his own this world that was given to him? He hates man. He hates humans. And my 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 theory is, and this is just me because it's never. Yeah. My theory is is that the reason Satan fell is that it was because of man being created. So um, what, you know, you've got all of us. You're going to create that. And um, you're gonna you're gonna do create them in your image where you didn't even do that to us. <clears throat> so anyway, a train of thought that I occasionally run run on. But yeah. I agree with I, I that makes sense that along the lines I think he wanted to be God too. He wanted the power, yeah. But wow. he was just <clears throat> he was just what jealous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It's <clears throat> So I just, I, um, you know, we're, um, you know, thank, thank the Lord for trying, for saving us from these evil forces. You know, it's so the victory, yeah. the victory's won. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it, you know, Jesus has already trampled and conquered death. Um, now it's just kind of cleaning up and, and playing everything out, um, um, according to God's plan of salvation for the world until, until all the people who are supposed to be saved are saved. <clears throat> and, okay. You know, it's um because yeah, in, in Revelation in a chapter eight, something like chapter, it's um the 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 um people that have been killed for the Lord before the throne are going, How long, how much longer, Lord? How much longer? Yeah. God says, What until until everybody's um, been saved that's going to be saved is essentially the answer. so it's um and until that happens you know we're not going to flip over into um the in, the actual completion yet so yeah you're you're right um let's see i don't know have you Ever read screw type letters? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we read them. And uh, Satan, he's he's an expert at manipulation of propaganda. <laughs> and um and fooling people and fooling them with philosophy that sounds oh that could be real. You know, our itching ears that um I remember when I, um, I back in my self help days, where I would get, you know, buy all these self help tapes and read all these books and all this kind of stuff. And one of them was called the Golden Key. And I got it from Amazon. I'm opening it up, and I remember the, the, I don't know, not a sense of urgency, but uh an eagerness to, to, to read. It's almost like a pamphlet. Here's the, here's the, the mystery of life is going to be revealed to me in this stupid pamphlet written by some, 
non-Christian guy. Not, I, re, I grab that and think that I'm going to have the, you know, what, what, what I'm searching for revealed to me and I'd finish it and not really be, to, you know, well, that was, yeah, I, I'd go, okay, well that, all right, that's interesting. It was all about we're, you know, that we're God, that we empower our own existence, that visualization, that if you want an open parking spot down, visualize that open parking spot and it'll be there for you. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> Sure it will. <laughs> yeah. so that's kind of ridiculous i know it sounds ridiculous but i um but when you're searching you'll search you'll read any i i read everything from eastern religion stuff to this um early 1900 i am god stuff um which is no different than the secret which was a book published not too long ago yeah i read that and oprah was really a high on Mm -hmm. that we control actualize our our surroundings now not that we don't have influence over that but god controls everything we don't um and and you know filling that hole in us with things with money or you know wine women and song that's just that's that's just leaves us completely empty um, we dig out the Bible too much. <laughs> if we're sticking the Bible, we'll get it. You got it. That's true. <laughs> but, um, but then unbelievers, when you ask them, have you ever read the Bible? What are they going to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And did I have ever did I ever really read it? No. But I would say I read it. Because I, I looked at it every now and then, read a little bit here, a little bit there. Well, somebody once said, I can't remember who, that until you accept Christ as your Savior, when you're reading the Bible, you're reading somebody else's mail. It doesn't make sense to you. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, the Spirit interprets it for you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not going to get the spirit until you're saved, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it just finish it on page six, and then we'll we'll move on to verses four and seven, and say that on you know four and Romans eight, you know, for to set the mind on on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, and indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Um, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. How? Because the spirit dwells in you. Um, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. In Jeremiah uh, 17, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart, test the mind, to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Um, so, I mean, it, our condition is so bad. It took God's sacrifice in his son to fix it. I mean, that's how bad it is. It's not, um, th that, that's, that, that's why there is no possibility of another path outside of Christ. Our condition is so bad. It's a necessity um, for, for us to be in Christ to, uh, to be saved. Um, and you know, in Hebrews, I was, you know, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And Laurie, that's in the New Testament. <laughs> so um and 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 for an for an unbeliever it is absolutely a fearful thing um but the good news is for the christians that um that god's wrath's been poured out um on jesus jesus drank the cup of wrath for us mm -hmm. and has done all the work 
we have to believe and repent. So that's so the so the the life vest is right there. Um, so verses four through seven, um, you know, but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. Again, the, the language here is, why are we getting all these wonderful things from the Father? Because we're in Christ. Mm -hmm. Without being in Christ, we cannot get these wonderful things from the Father. Mm -hmm. um, that's why this the, the language that we've been reading, in Christ, in Christ, is you know Christ in the Father, us in Christ, um, so that you know, Jesus sits down on the throne with his father and then we're to sit down on the throne with Jesus. So it's, that's the kind of the, the relationship. Our access to the father is only through the son. So, but yeah, and, and, you know, why did God save us? You know, for for his glory and because he loved us. Mm -hmm. Does he love us? He loves us. That's what we're told. Um, he loves the he loves us even when we're unlovable. Um, and and you know, kind of in in many cases, um, drags us kicking and screaming um, until he can change us enough to to not kick and scream. Yeah. Some more hard headed than others. Pardon? Some are more hard headed than others. Ng, you got that right. Uh, I said it. Yeah, you know, so we got to. You know, we talk about God's wrath, but you know that it's. You know, God's salvation for us is nothing but mercy, love, grace, and kindness. Um, and I know humanity shakes its fist at God and blames God for everything. It, you know, bl blames God that they don't even believe in. Um, and, and I know several people that are very angry at God, yet say they don't believe. So I, I, I kind of... Yeah. It, it's kind of cool though that okay all right it's good being it's good it's actually good for them to be angry at god um because that means they're 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 still thinking they're still um yeah they're still struggling with this you see some hope you see some hope for them yeah exactly and so <laughs> you just got to keep living out living it out and preaching the gospel um in ways that that'll you know that 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 are effective for that particular personality um so we can shift the way we communicate stuff there must be some hope for us because look after 9 11 churches were busting at the seams yeah yeah, yeah. um you know emily says it a lot that she, you know, be talking to somebody and and they'll say jesus yes call upon the name of the lord <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure the way they said Jesus is a uh, is a good thing, though. You know, <laughs> that's how you that's how you turn it back, though. It's like okay, call it upon the name of the Lord. It it, it sets them back. It makes them actually go. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so just a, a little bit of uh, it's Psalm 103. You know, talking about God's mercy. Um, God, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways and oppressed, oppressed by the devil is not just oppressed by, you know, the king or prince down the road. Um, think bigger oppression. Um, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he, all, will he keep his anger forever. 
He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. And Lori, that's in the Old Testament. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and Micah, also in the Old Testament, who is a God like you pardoning iniquity and passing over transgress transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Um, so great grace is mentioned, you know, 12 times in Ephesians. Um, and verses five and eight, you know, you're saved by grace. Um, saved by grace through faith. Both, you know, grace is that unmerited favor plus some other stuff. Um, and, and both of these are gifts and blessings. You know, faith is a gift from God. We've got to keep remembering that, that our faith um, is a gift. And we're actually supposed to pray for more of that. Um, and being, you know, being raised from the dead, our previous condition. You know, so it's um, in Revelation, talks about the first first resurrection. Um and from my impression on that is that the first resurrection is when God changes our hearts from stone to flesh so we can have eyes to see and ears to hear. That's the first resurrection. The second resurrection is the one after we're, um, you know, when, when everybody's resurrected um, after death. So, all right. Oh, okay. And then the the kind of the balance of the, the verses now are about God's work. You know, God's creating a new person in us. Um, not only has he made us alive, um, you know, he's continuing to work up to, to work on us. Um for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift, I'm reading Ephesians um, so 8, 9, and 10 um, of, what, of chapter 2. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And again, we have that language, created for we are his workmanship father's workmanship created in Je in Jesus Christ for good works in these good works they're just part of God's plan that he had planned before creation before we were even created God had you know this God's plan um, Uh, and, you know, another theological buzzword or concept, concepts better than buzzword, is regeneration. And that's what that, that's, you know, that's, that's what um, that changing of, of not only our, our hearts from stone to flesh, um, and that ongoing process is usually called sanctification, how we're, you know, God continues to work on us. Um, as he perfects us in Christ Jesus. So that's the, um, you know, so the, uh, the regeneration is a, um, is a fancy old theological word that the reformers used back in the 13 and 1400s, where we, we, we say saved. Um, it's kind of a similar concept. Um, and this is not about being religious. Um, this it's about a relationship with a living God, um, a real person, you know, persons. This is a um, so you know. Let's not we we don't need to fall into that cosmic energy trap and that kind of stuff. I mean, we're this is a re a relationship with with real persons. That's what yeah. God 
three persons, one being, and we can have a relationship with all three persons, with that whole being of God. Um, so, you know, everybody kind of nowadays to scoffs at, at religion. Um, you know, but, you know, Christianity can't, can't shoehorn it into a word like religion. Yeah. You know, the, the original Christians called it the way, you know, the way of life, the way to yeah. life. It, it's um it's about existence it's about putting one foot in front of the other um so it's and it's jesus said he was the way yes that's true um amen all right let's see four minutes um and we got our and, and I know, I know, bang, 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 bang. Salvation is a gift. Gift, 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 gift. It's by a grace so that no one can boast. Um, and, and because we're so, we're so whack that if, if we could do this by ourselves and do our own choosing, uh, bring ourselves to God, um, you know, open the door ourselves, you know, we can, um, you know, so stand at the door and knock. You know, we can stand at the door and knock. We're called to the door, but we're not opening the door. Jesus opens the door. Yeah. Um, and the, the interesting kind of transition in a lot of these verses, um, you know, we went from dead in our trespasses and sins to alive together um, with Christ. Um, you know, we went from sons of disobedience to alive together with Christ. I needed to, I missed a little mark there, sorry. Um, we're raised up with Christ versus children of wrath. We're seated with Christ versus children of wrath. Um, we're recipients of generous mercy versus children of wrath. We're recipients of great love. We're recipients of rich grace. We're recipients of God's kindness. Um, despite being children of wrath originally and sons of disobedience originally. Yeah, I really didn't do that on page nine very well on that little exhibit. Sorry about that. Um, You know, you know, grace comes through faith, and our human response to that is belief and trust in the Lord. Um, you know, faith is is that instrument by which we lay hold of Christ, but faith is not a work, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the whole of salvation should be viewed as a gift. Um and we should never think of salvation as a transaction um, in which God provides grace and we provide faith. No, it's all grace. Um, we were dead and had to be awakened to believe. That's a quote from John Stott, um, an Anglican theologian, Canadian guy. So the glory doesn't go to us for our salvation. It only goes to, um, to God. Um Salvation results in good works, not vice versa. Um, the the um, many churches are reluctant to say stuff like that because it thinks we'll take the foot off the pedal, mm -hmm. coast and. Um, but if 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 we're alive in Christ and He's really working in us. Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 have this hunger and thirst to learn more, and to be, and to to to, you know, to be more Christ-like. You know, there while we all have ups and downs in our in our Christian walk, but that trajectory should always be that way. And if it's if it's not, we need to stop and you know, something's wrong. Where we've we've um. You know, like like in Revelation, you know, we've lost our first love. We need to, you know, we need to 
we need to get back to that. Um, and God will get us back to that. The God will yank the chain and get our attention again. Um, and I don't think a lot of us want God yanking our chain and getting our attention. Let's so this I think it would be all in our best interest if we kept our focus and attention on the Lord and not have to jerk our chain to get our attention. Um yes. Not that that would save us from trouble and challenges and trials, but it might eliminate some chain jerking that would be um, very uncomfortable for us. Right. Um and, and a lot of what we've been talking about is called monergism. Um, it's the concept that God alone rescues sinners, and it's opposed to synergism, where we work together to be saved. No, we are saved. We do cooperate with the Spirit um, in that sanctification process, but we don't cooperate in our salvation. So that's, that's the distinction. Um, so there is cooperation on our part. It's just not cooperation with salvation. It's cooperation with sanctification. The salvation is God's work alone. It is not of your own doing. We've heard. Yeah. And it is of grace. Cool. Um, any, well, I guess two minutes and 15 seconds over. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to um, but I wanted to make sure we got through this lesson. I didn't want to keep doing half lessons and it gets a little distracting for us to keep doing half of one. And then, yeah, I, Jeff, if I could just add something real quick and I, and I could be wrong about this whole thing. I mean, people, you always hear the expression, I have little faith or I have great faith. And I don't believe at least regarding faith that you need to have bigger faith. I think what you need to know is how awesome your God is and how big he is and then once you realize that you'll be more willing to depend on him and live like jesus and and that will be your faith and 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 knowing that you will be you know saved you know um i i i don't know i i don't think it's a matter of i have a little faith or a big faith faith is faith and you know it's it's where you have to put the precedence on god is how much you think he is so awesome you need to realize how big god is and then once you realize that your faith and how strong your God is, then you will depend on him more, you know, and live the way Jesus wants you to live. And he laid it all out in the New Testament. So, you know, I think that will help, you know, because some people I have some Christians that, you know, they sin and they're sorry. And they say, oh, I guess I have a little faith. And I said, no, you believed you're saved. You know, just try not to, you do have a, uh, you are accountable now, so you can't keep making the same mistakes. Just pray about it and have the Lord to help you through these um, times of making the same mistake. But you, faith is an action. You need to live the way Jesus has wanted you to live, you know, loving him and then loving everyone else, whether we want to or not, especially those that, you know, we have problems with, you know, not everybody's perfect, but I just don't believe in little faith or big faith. I'm probably wrong. No, there's, there's but yeah, you know, faith as you as your Christianity matures, you know. Yeah, it's a and and you know Jesus talked about um, the magnitude of faith. Remember, even the faith is if you the faith the size of a mustard seed and um, yes, that's you, right. He did say that you can move mountains. You have a little bit can move mountains. Yeah. So so there is a growth in that faith aspect yeah. as we as we walk with Christ. Um, but a lot of what you said, I, I absolutely. Well, that's that even gets to my point because you don't have to have a whole lot of faith. You can have a little teeny tiny faith to move mountains. You just got to know how awesome your God is, and He is who He is, and our salvation. And we have to, you know, yeah. live accordingly too. Because I don't believe, you know, once you say I believe in Jesus, that's it, and then you go to church, and that's the end of it. You know, you need to live that way too, and you got to preach the gospel. He won't leave us right there. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, who wants to pray us out? We'll um, we're on for next uh, next Tuesday, which is Valentine's Day. So, yep. um, we'll do lesson five then. Um, and I'll work on lesson six. So, okay. just pray us out. Well, I did the last two. <laughs> okay, Don will do it. 
Thanks, Father. Give thanks for this uh, this hour of um, nourishment and learning your word. And we just give thanks for all these people that have come together and, and um, we just pray that um, we, we can do that again next week and next Tuesday. Keep us safe during the week. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. See y'all soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night. Have a great night. You Good too. Night. <laughs> Have a good week. <laughs>